y'all welcome back to my channel my name is Amy today we're gonna be filming in a little bit of a different area and I'm also not as made up as I normally am but you know sometimes you just have the need to film and I was just like you know what it doesn't matter it's all real here I went work out I did some work taking a little break I just feel like I want to film so, I, and I have a ton of books that I bought in the month of August that I want to share with y'all. So, let's just get right into it. First, I'll start off with my Barnes & Noble's books um, because that's kind of like the smallest of the stack, maybe. Might be around the same. I have some books I bought from Barnes & Noble's. Also, I had made a uh, book outlet order and I have some borrowed books that I borrowed from my best friend Debbie. I don't know if I borrowed them in August or if it was at the very tail end of July, but it's all good. It's all in the same. I had them stacked up, so we're going to talk about them. First up, a little bitty bag right here um, from Barnes & Noble's from one of my mini random trips. I'm trying this month to hold off on the trips to Barnes & Noble's because it's killing me. <laughs> but oh, I love Barnes & Noble's so much. But anyway, I've kind of been in the mood to continue this little cozy mystery. This is a uh, Foul Elm from Murder by Miranda James. This is the Cat in the Stacks mystery. I love this little cozy mystery. It's nothing spectacular. It's just a fun, cozy read. It's about um, this guy and his cat and they solve mysteries together. It's the cutest thing ever. The guy is a um, Sort of like a librarian type of guy. He but he works I believe at a college. This is the third book in the series um, I'm very far behind in it because uh, I kind of started it late and then um, I just never picked it back up after like the second book uh, and I just really I've been wanting to to continue the little series because I really do like it but I just never I don't know I just never did but anyway I saw the third book um, at Barnes and Nobles on one of my trips and I was like you know what I'm just gonna go ahead and get it it was super cheap so in this series we follow Charlie who is a librarian um, well he's yes I believe he is a librarian I believe he works at like a college in like the cataloging department or something like that. He also, um, I believe, does volunteer work at his local library. And he always brings his cat Diesel with him everywhere he goes. I don't know if he brings him to work or not. I don't remember if he does. Um, but I know he brings him to the library a lot. Um, but anyway, him and Charlie and Diesel solve murders together. So uh, it's been a cute little series. I really enjoyed it. Um, so I thought I'd, go, I'd continue on with the series when I saw that um, Barnes & Noble's had the third book in stock. And so I just went ahead and I got it. I'm not sure what this particular book is about. But like I said, Charlie and Diesel are going to crack the case. <laughs> I also picked up uh, Flowers in the Attic by B.C. Andrews. This kind of sparked my interest one weekend when Lifetime was playing all of V.C. Andrews' movies, or well, books to movies adaptations on Lifetime. Uh, I got so involved in Flowers in the Attic. Uh, it intrigued me. I was like hooked to the TV. I loved every minute of it, so I definitely had to read the book. If the movie is this good, the book has got to be even better. I don't remember the characters' names, but... Um, in the movie, it was, you know, they were seemed to be like a very happy family in the in the beginning. It was the mother and the father, and they had um, four kids. Two of them were twins, and they had um, two older kids, and then the twins were, were younger. And I believe the twins were a boy, boy and a girl. And this is in the movie. I'm guessing the book is, <laughs> is the same. We shall see. Um, but in the very beginning of the movie, the father dies, and... Um, the, the mother, who pretty much um, was kind of cast out of her family for ma marrying the guy that she married and had children with, um, she goes back to this family. They have, um, you know, they are very wealthy. Um, they live in like this enormous home. Um, and But her mother um, is sort of a witch. Her mother seems to be like this very evil old woman. Um, we don't see her father, but it's it's made that the father is not, um, 
she has to prove herself to her father, basically. So, um, he did not approve of the man that she married, and he had said that she will not get a penny of his when he dies if he if she was to marry this man and have his children. Well, she did, um, and now that this man is dead, she is, you know, she needs money. So she goes to her father and she has to pretend that she, you know, that she's, you know, single, doesn't have any children. Um, this little fling that she had with, with her husband, um, was just a fling. And, uh, she tries to, I guess, like gain the trust and love of her father back so she can be put back into his will. So the children are basically cast away in the attic of this home. Um, they cannot be seen by anyone, but especially by the father, by her fa by, by her father. Um, the mother will come up and give them food or whatever every now and then. Um, so they are like trapped in this attic for years. It was just so, it was so good and just, I don't know. I don't know what drew me in about it, but it was a very good movie. So I'm hoping the book, I heard the book was, was, was just as good, if not better. Um, there is like incest in in this movie or book, whatever. Um, there was in the movie. There was incest in the movie. So if that's not something that you're interested, not that you're interested in it, but if that's something that you don't want to read, um, this probably isn't the book for you. It doesn't bother me, but um, to to me, I kind of felt for these kids, like, of course they're going to fall for each other. That They're the only people they they know. And they're, like, coming of age, like, teenagers, like, discovering themselves and their bodies. And they're curious. And they do not know anything else but them and this attic and the surroundings of the attic. And it's crazy. Crazy movie. I can't wait to get into the book. On another random trip to Barnes and Nobles, I picked up the scary stories to tell in the dark. I bought them in this little collection um, pack, the three book collection. And this is from, from the movie. The books are, I just preferred the covers on these rather than um, the original covers. That's just my preference. I usually go for the original covers, but I thought these covers were just so pretty. These are the movie covers. So this is Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This is book one. Then we have more Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. This is book two. They just seemed really creepy. If you can't tell, there's like a creepy dude at the end of that hallway there. It kind of reminds me of um, a little bit of like Michael Myers, say like in... Um, what movie was... Which, which Michael Myers was that where he's like oh it was the the remake the um the rob zombie remake where he's like in the um institute that he's in and like he gets loose and he goes about killing it's kind of remind the scene kind of reminds me of that i don't i know weird and then we have scary stories three more tales to chill your bones i just thought this I thought this was like actually really pretty and I just kind of wanted to have this book in my collection. But yeah, I heard the movie, um, my, my friend Debbie went to see it and she said it was good, but I've heard some people say that, uh, that it wasn't good, that they were kind of disappointed, um, because they've read these books like from their childhood and, um, they were just really disappointed about, at the movie adaptation of it. I don't know. I've never, I haven't seen the movie. Um, I have not read any of these when I was growing up. I didn't know these existed when I was growing up. So I'm anxious to to read them. So they're just, I think, like just short stories. And these are all written by Alan Schwartz. And um, the illustration and these are really creepy. And they are done by drawings done by Stephen Gamble. So I'm probably going to read these next month sometime in the month of October because, you know, it's October. And on my last Barnes & Nobles trip, they were doing their 50% off book haul sale. So, and if you bought three or more books, you got this cute tote bag. So it says book haul, hashtag book haul at the top. Um, I, of course, bought three or more, three or more books. Um, I bought five books, to be exact. Um, so first up, we have Exit Wounds. Um, this is actually 19 Tales of Mystery from the Modern Masters of Crime. So, several different stories from 
like six different authors. We have Lee Child, Val McDermott, Dean Kuntz, John Connolly, Dennis Lahan Lahane, and Jeffrey Deaver. Um, so I just thought this would be really cool to read. I love true crime, true crime podcasts, and this kind of reminded me of something like that. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think any of these stories are probably true, but uh, it just reminded me of like a true crime type of story. So I just thought it would be fun to read. I also picked up A Nearly Normal Family by M.T. Edwardson. All I know about this book or like remember kind of reading or glancing through the synopsis um, was that we have an 18 year old young woman that is accused of murdering a um, a man 15 years her senior so why did she why did she commit this crime if she did do it um, what was she doing with a man for 15 years her senior um, it just sounded really intriguing and um, sort of true crime-ish I guess I don't know it really just drew me in the synopsis just drew me in so I went ahead and I picked that up uh, I've been wanting the new Nora Roberts. I am a Nora Roberts fan. You will see in a little bit. Um, I've listened and read a good bit of her books. Not all of them, but a good bit. Um, and her newest one, Undercurrents, sounded really good. So just reading a little bit of the synopsis, it sounds like we follow um, a, a young man named Zane. He is the son of a successful surgeon and a um, very stylish and his very stylish wife from what I read in the synopsis so but what you see on the outside isn't really what you get on the inside and Zane knows all the terrible truths and lies that go on in his house with his family I believe he has a little sister I think I read that in there that he's trying to protect uh, from his mother and his father um, so it just sounds really really good and I'm anxious to, to get into it Next, I got Never Have I Ever by Jocelyn Jackson. Um, I hope I'm saying that right. I've never read anything by this author, but this book has been on my radar for one. I love the cover, and um, I've heard really good things about it. So I went ahead and I picked it up. From what I understand, it's um, we follow along with this young girl who um, is living her life to the fullest as best she can. Um, trying to make it as perfect as she possibly can. But one night, a woman shows up on her doorstep on book club night of all nights um, and lures the group into playing a very sinful game of truths and lies from what I gather. She also knows of some dark secrets that um, our main character is hiding from her past and she threatens to bring those dark secrets up. Um, from what I gather from reading the synopsis. So it sounds really good. I'm excited to get into that one. And then last but not least, I picked up The Cabin by Natasha Preston. This one just sounded really good. I believe this is a young adult mystery. So we follow along with um, a young girl and her friends. They are spending the weekend at a cabin, partying it up, you know, living their best teenage lives. And um, two of their friends get murdered. Just to Give it a good sum on the back it says with no signs of a forced entry or struggle suspicion turns to the five survivors someone isn't telling the truth and Mackenzie's first mistake is assuming the killing is over so it just sounds really good and fun i i don't think i've read a young adult um mystery or a thriller whatever you want to call it ever so i'm really excited about this one all right, that's it for Barnes and Nobles. Let's get into Book Outlet. So first I'll go over the books that I have not read yet because I did get, um, I like to add books to my collection that I have read. Like, not that I have read, but that I have listened. Because um, I've listened to Audible for years now, um, especially um, years ago when I had to commute to my job. It would take me an hour to get to work sometimes. So my saving grace was audiobooks. So I've listened to so many and I've loved so many. So over the years, I've gradually been trying to just collect those that I really liked and that I would like to have on my shelf. Um, so that's kind of what I, I do with like Book Outlet. But, um, but of course I do get some that I haven't read yet. Uh, which in this, in this haul is only these two. So I got um, Strange Weather by Joe Hill. So I believe this is actually a 
um, just a novel of short stories. Uh, yeah, four short, four short novels written right there on the bottom. I I learned about this book from Rachel at um, the Shades of Orange. I love her channel. She's mostly horror, um, but I'm kind of tiptoeing into the horror genre. And so I just like to see what she um, puts out there and what she's been reading and what she thinks about it. And um, so a lot of her, recomm her recommendations are really good and she'll let you know if how what she thinks if you're like just getting into horror, what she, what she thinks will be good for you. So this was one of her suggestions. Um, so I went ahead and I picked it up. I've never read anything from Joe Hill yet. I do have Nosferatu, too, um, but I have not read that yet. I have not watched the show, but um, but yeah, this seemed just really fun to start out with. Then I picked up The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Heard so many good things about this book. Um, what really intrigued me though, it is about a couple, a gay couple, Eric and Andrew, I think, yes, and their seven-year-old son, Wynn, um, are, I think, like, vacationing in a cabin, I could be wrong, but, um, strangers start to show up on their doorstep. I believe it has something to do with apocalyptic world. I didn't read too much of the synopsis, I just kind of, like, scanned through it, um, but there's a little part down here that says, um, None of what's going to happen is your fault. You haven't done anything wrong, but the three of you will have to make some tough de decisions. I wish with all my broken heart you didn't have to. Your dads won't, won't want to let us in, but they have to. We need your help to save the world. So it just sounds really intriguing and fun. I love apocalyptic stuff, stories, um, and I, was, I just really like the fact that we have two dads and, and their son. In this little story so anxious to read that and then the rest I've already read um, and I'm just adding to my collection so this is the bullet by Mary Louise Kelly I listened to this years ago um, so forgive me I don't really remember much about it I just know that it does have to do with a bullet so we follow along with Carolyn in this story in this mystery thriller, um, she goes in for an MRI and they discover a bullet that is lodged in the base of her skull. And so we follow along her story of trying of figuring out how that bullet got there. Um, she finds out all sorts of things from her past um, that her, her parents were murdered when she was like only three years old. Um, I don't remember if this has to do with any memory loss or anything of why she um, like never knew this. I don't know, it's been so long since I've listened to this this book. I may, I may reread it just because it's been that long, but I do remember like really liking this story. Then I have three Nora Roberts here that um, I, I loved. So this is The, the Witness by Nora Roberts. Um, I, again, I don't remember too much about it. I just remember that I really liked it. I believe it has to do with a young girl that um, that has witnessed a crime, a murder. I don't remember what it was, but she um, sets herself up in like this house out by a lake, very secluded. She changes her name. Um, she works from home for like a security service. Um, she's a very... She protects herself very well from everyone. She just tries to keep to herself and seclude it. Um, from, I guess she, I think she's basically running because of this crime that she witnessed. That's all I remember, but I know it was good. Oh, this one was so good. Yes, this is The Liar by Nora Roberts. Um, this has to do with a woman. Um, she is married to a man uh, that um, I think he gets, he gets, I think it's to get killed. He must get killed um, or something. But um, he left her like it's all a front. Like she's like thinks they're very wealthy. They have all this money. They live in like this beautiful home with their daughter. And once he passes, she discovers that he had basically another life. Like um, and he left them in like terrible debt. And um, she also, like, she finds, like, multiple IDs in, like, his safe box. Um, he basically never existed. Like, his name, she cannot find any information about him. 
he never existed. So to pull her life back together, she goes back to her hometown. I believe she moves in with her parents. As all this, as you know, as she's getting everything together, as his her husband's story unfolds, um, she finds new love and finds a new new place for her and her child to grow up. And it was it was a really good story. Not only did it contain like a mystery type thriller, but it also had a little bit of romance in it. I really like this one. This one too, uh, of course, I, they all, Nora Roberts books that I've read um, have some sort of romance involved, even though, even though they're like a mystery or a thriller. And then I had The Collector by Nora Roberts. This was also a very good read. Um, I remember this, so she is a, um, she's like a house sitter or apartment sitter, a professional house sitter is what it says in here. Um, and she witnesses a murder, um, from her like window across across the way I believe and um, she befriends someone I believe in the building and to come to find out it was this guy's brother who either did the murdering something like that again it's been a really long time um, but they come together and um, try to figure out what has happened did, did his brother kill this person and of course a romance happens as well. This is a really good book as also. All these, all three of these were really good. I know th my descriptions are very vague. I don't really remember exactly. Just remember those little tidbits, but I know I loved them when I did listen to them. Okay, next I have a bunch of books that I borrowed from my best friend. So once I told her that I was trying to get into more of the horror genre, um, she brought me to her bookshelf and we looked through her stuff and she gave me some things that she thought I might enjoy. So of course we have some Stephen King in here. We have, um, The Running Man. Um, we have Dreamcatcher and Gerald's Game. I don't know what any of these are about. She assures me that I'm, these are the ones that I'm probably really going to like. She kind of gave me like a little little bitty summaries of them, um, but I don't I don't really remember what she told me. I just remember thinking, oh, okay, that sounds good. So, um, so yeah, so that's that. I'm sure you know Stephen King. I'm sure you know what they're about. You've probably read them already. I don't know. So this little blurb on The Running Man says, in the year 2025, the best men don't run for president. They run for their lives. Ben Richards is out of work and out of luck. His 18-month-old daughter is sick and neither Ben nor his wife can afford to take her to a doctor. For a man from the poor side of the town with no cash and no hope, there's only one thing to do, become a contestant on one of the network's games. Oh, yeah, okay, I remember she was telling me this is like a game. And, um, yeah, you, you basically just run. And um, whoever is the last man standing wins. So you know you're either going to win or you're going to die. I was like, oh, yeah, I got to read that. Oh, and this one, yeah, Gerald's Game. She she told me that um, a husband and wife, um, I guess, kind of get freaky. And the husband um, handcuffs the wife to the bed. And then I believe he, like, has a stroke and dies or something like that. And so, like, she's, like, left there naked. It's <laughs> and then it says, but Jessie's about to have company that goes beyond all of her worst nightmares. Like, that's a nightmare in itself. Dreamcatchers, I was kind of reading this and it, it had, looks like, sounds like it has something to do with like maybe some sci-fi stuff and I'm not a big sci-fi reader. I don't know why she gave me this one. Just from reading the back, it says that some friends are on like a hunting trip. Soon the four friends are plunged into a horrifying struggle with a creature from another world where their only chance of survival is locked in their shared past and in the dream catcher. Meh, I don't know. I don't know why I got this one. This one, I think maybe this one was like her favorite. So we'll, we'll see how, how it goes. And then the last two are Richard Lehman books. She told me that he is like, He's passed now, but she told me that his books are like some of her absolute favorite horror stories. Um, so she gave me Endless Night and Blood Games. Oh yeah, this one sounded really good. Um, so basically, if there's this young girl, 16-year-old girl, um, 
her home gets broken into and she sees her entire family like get slaughtered. So one of the killers, it says, um, his friends have left him to find the only living witness to their massacre or else their, his family will be butchered next. Endless Nights. It's blurred by Stephen King. If you've missed Layman, you've missed a treat. So I'm I'm ex I'm excited to to like get into these, especially for the upcoming um, months of fall and Halloween. I'm super excited. So this one is about um, a group of women that get together every year and they choose a place to you know, get together, spend the weekend or whatever. Um, this time they chose a totem pole lodge and it says here that it was a bad choice. It is a deserted resort hotel deep in the woods with a gory, shocking past. But the resort isn't quite as deserted as they think. And not all the gruesome events at the totem pole lodge are in its past. The worst are still to come. These all sound really good. The only one I'm kind of wondering about is Dreamcatchers because that just doesn't really, I don't know. Even even reading like the back, I'm not totally invested in it, but I think this is one of Debbie's favorite books. So I'm going to give it a go and we're going to see. So that is it, y'all. That is all the books that I got in August. We'll see how September goes. Maybe, hopefully it'll be a shorter pile in September. I'm going to try to do much better. But you know, I can't help it when it comes to books. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. I'll have all these books that I mentioned linked in um, the description box below if you're interested in checking any of those out for yourselves. Come follow me on Goodreads. I'm always keeping up to date with my what I'm reading, what I'm currently reading. Um, I do reviews on everything that I'm reading. And, um, and my Instagram. My Instagram is not a bookstagram but I post a lot of book stuff on there um, but it's more of my personal Instagram but I'll have all that linked down below for you and um, I'll see y'all in my next video bye y'all